In this video, we're going to learn to make a circle that looks like this and also tells time. So let's go! The dimensions of the piece of plywood that I had is 90 inches long by 20 inches wide. So I just cut it in half to give me two 45 by 20 inch pieces. Once I had more manageable sizes of plywood, I then took them over to the table saw to cut them down to 3 quarter inch strips. In order to make the chevron pattern that I'm going for, I need to cut my glued up plywood panels at 45 degrees. So to reduce the waste of material, I glued up my panels at 45 degrees, laying it out first so I can mark a line for me to follow when I'm gluing up my panel. Once the panel had a full day to dry, I cut a clean straight edge on one side so that I could run it through my table saw.
All right, so a lot of my pieces broke in half or three pieces. I guess I didn't apply enough glue. Um, but it's kind of a blessing in disguise because my pieces are really long and I don't have enough of them. So it's more of a rectangle than a square. And I was going to have a lot of waste if I cut a circle out of all that. So the ones I broke in half, I'm going to place in the bottom here. Um, that way I have more of a radius uh, to cut my circle from. I had worries that the plywood panel itself was not going to be strong enough because it felt flimsy. So to add strength, I decided to add a quarter inch piece of plywood to the back. This will also be a template for my pattern plywood when I go to cut the circle. After gluing and cutting, I only had enough material for a 3 foot tall clock, not the 4 foot I was aiming for. To mark out my 3 foot clock, I found the center on my quarter inch piece of plywood and made a quick guide that would give me a foot and a half radius from center. Nothing fancy, just a strip of MDF with a nail and pen. Now you can use the oscillating spindle sander or belt sander to sand to your line. I have the oscillating spindle sander, so I'm going to use that. Because I was very sloppy with my second glue up, most if not all of my plywood strips were not leveled with one another. That means I have a lot of sanding waiting for me, so I just used a belt sander with 80 grit sandpaper to take care of it. Honestly, I should have used 30 grit or 60 grit because this still took forever. After applying wood glue to both surfaces, I then proceeded to use all of my clamps. I also added some heavy miscellaneous items to the center because my clamps wouldn't reach. Now, I did not want to use my router to flush my pattern plywood to my quarter inch plywood, but I did it anyways. I guess I should have trusted my gut and not used the router. As you can see, I ended up chipping off a piece of pattern plywood. Luckily, I can just glue it back and you can't even see the mistake. I went back to my original plan of using the oscillating spindle sander to sand to my quarter inch plywood.
Now you don't need to have an oscillating spindle sander, you can use a belt sander, but just make sure you're keeping it straight. I did have some voids on my plywood, so I just used some wood glue and sawdust from all that sanding I did to fill them in. Alright, so after sanding for what seemed like forever, I want to get going on the actual clock itself. I got this Gigabyte clock kit off Amazon. Uh, you're basically supposed to put this on your wall. You don't need to do any of this. Um, so if you want to skip this entire part and just buy this and put it on your wall, you can. Um, but I did open it just to see how it looked, but I haven't really like played around with it. So this is basically what the kit comes with. The two hands the clock mechanism itself these foam pads i guess to elevate your numbers and these thingies um, and then the actual numbers themselves as you can see i have like not all my numbers because i went with uh, a clock that only uses the 12 6 3 and 9 number and then the rest are just these dashes right here or maybe you can see this better on this side but these dashes right here so I thought it would be smart of me to apply my finish to my plywood before I even attempt to put this clock together. Okay, so this is the center of my clock here. Um, I know because there's a little hole there that I made earlier when I was finding center. Um, this is going to be the top, bottom, and then the left and the right. Um, I actually had a poll on my Instagram where I had you guys choose which orientation to have this clock. Uh, so if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me. I'll have a link down in the description. Um, but with that out of the way, I need to go ahead and mark 2 and 5 sixteens up from here. Um, that's where this is going to go. And then the center piece is going to hang on top on the top of that. And that should be right in the center of this clock. So let's get that done. I'm going to be using a keyhole slot router bit so I can have this clock sit flush with the wall and have no hardware.